Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Irvin, also known as Kobume. Welcome to another help desk tutorial. This can also be used for desktop support. If you guys are doing desktop support, some kind of tech support at some kind of company, like in an office or, or do some kind of remote support, this, these videos are really good. Check out my other videos too. I have a lot of these. All right, so today's Take It is about Citrix. We're going to talk about Citrix. I think few people have requested it in the past, and I've noticed somebody recently also uh, requested a Citrix video and I've been postponing it and there's a really good reason for that. But before we get into it, please take a moment to like this video. I really appreciate it. And I also want to give big thank you to people that became members of my channel. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate it. All right. So this ticket is about Citrix not working from our good friend, Mike Moser. He says, hi, my Citrix is not working. So we're going to talk about Citrix and we're going to talk about Citrix from the point of view of user or from point of view of help desk or tech support, not necessarily from somebody who set up Citrix um, services or for example, cloud services to host uh, Citrix, uh, you know, web apps, stops or whatnot. Okay. So let me tell you why I postponed it for me to talk about it on a server level you actually have to pay a license or pay money in order to even view it or even install it or to have any access to it. So I can't show you a video on a uh, point of view of a server, how it's set up on the server level. And I also don't want to get fired because I don't want to show, I can't show it on my, uh, at my job. You know what I mean? It's not allowed. It's a big security thing. And also, so if, for example, here, I'm not going to just, talk about it. I'm just going to show you. So if you go to citrix.com and if you go to downloads and you want to download the server uh, workspace, uh, you have to register it. You have to register under your full name, uh, work email, company name, job title, country, phone number, etc. and etc. This is just to request a demo of it. But anyways, you have to show, you know, put in your real address, your real phone number, your everything, so they can sell you this service. This is usually somebody who owns a business that needs Citrix set up for their business. All right, but that's okay. We're going to talk about it uh, from user point of view. This is what users use it uh, for. They use it to access, uh, you know, remote apps. Some people nowadays call it a cloud, everything hosted in a cloud, but it's on a server, right? It's just on a server, which could be a network or somewhere, or they can even be set up on some you know, web web services like uh, uh, Google Cloud or AWS, right? Amazon uh, version of that. So, but this user, he's just simply using it from his computer. He's using it probably just to access a remote desktop. All right, so let's go to this demo website that I have. I'm going to just copy pasta it. Hold on just a moment here. This is my website, by the way. Uh, CosmicNova.com if you want to check it out. They have some cool articles on there. Anyways, this is the website and it's a demo website that somebody else created. It's not fully functional, but it'll give you an idea of how what happens is user usually has a link and they go to this website and the website's like, you know, trying to look for Citrix Receiver, which is the desktop app that they use to connect to this remote desktop. So it's a kind of like an inception, uh, if you will. So they're using their own desktop to access another desktop, but that's a remote. So it's a remote desktop, right? That's what it does. And now it's saying, well, you don't have Citrix receiver, uh, but you can download it from us directly. And this is what usually happens. Um, it, the website itself that's hosting uh, the, uh, the service, uh, whether it's, you know, app or just a desktop, remote desktop will offer you an ability to download and install Citrix receiver locally. And this could be the issue with Mike Moser here. Uh, what it does is it actually downloads this thing, which is called Citrix Receiver. It's a very tiny program, and we'll actually go to the website. Website will, uh, I'll show you this. It's 40, 41 megabytes and installs usually silently if it's coming from a website. Not necessarily, but it depends how it's set up. Uh, what's replacing it is actually Citrix Workspace app. So Citrix Receiver, I think they stopped making them in or stopped uh, making new versions of Citrix Receiver in 2018. So now they're switching over to Citrix Workspace app, which is essentially the same thing. It's just kind of a different naming scheme and maybe there is more to it, but essentially they do the same thing. 
Okay, so here's Mike at his website, and he can, he can't log into it. Usually, you know, he's able to just log in, and then he launches Citrix, and it's working fine. In this case, uh, this is the problem. So we're just going to click Agree, and it will be the same difference as if I try to install Citrix Receiver. Uh, when I click Install, it's going to download and install it. And here it is. You can see that it's a matter of fact, it's the exact same size. And here it is: Citrix Receiver Web.exe 41.4. And technically, it's a plugin, if you will, but it's more of like a, an app that's installed on your computer. So I'm going to click Run, so that way it installs it right away. So a lot of times, this is silent, and it just does it in the background for most users. Uh, but anyways, we're going to have to do it. We're going to have to give it admin privileges to do it. And it kind of gives you an explanation of what it is. You see, it says Citrix Receiver Install Software allows you to use virtual applications uh, that, sh that your organization provides, including software that allows you access to the application to use your browser. So yeah, Centrix will, you know, when, once it installs, it's going to launch it. It's going to launch it within your browser, but it will be like a remote desktop. Um, a lot of times it won't even look, it won't even look like remote desktop. Like what I'm doing right now, I'm just using regular remote desktop to remote into this computer called Stream that's on my local network. Uh, but with Citrix, it will just be like a web page. And if that web page might just have like IE pulled up you know, just an example, and be very, very limited. This is why Citrix server can host a lot of these uh, instances. And it says here, allows applications to use your webcam, microphone, you know. Anyways, it's like a computer, basically, um, That when it comes to remote desktop part of it. Uh, also, same, I guess, with virtual uh, applications. So we're going to install it and just kind of see what happens now once we install it. So it's going to take, I don't know, like 10 15 seconds to install it it's a very small package as i've mentioned and here's another thing that come up you see how it's saying on the bottom it's trying to the website is trying to open it right but it realizes that it's a risk and when it's installed silently when it's installed silently users can miss this easily right it says here this web page wants to run the following add-on Right, so it installs it is also as an add-on, right? Because it's using your um, IE in this case, Internet Explorer, to you know show you that remote desktop session that I talked about. And this is what users sometimes miss. Usually, they go to the website and install install silently. They don't get these pop-ups. Basically, they don't it doesn't ask you do you want to install this and that like we went through just now. It would just do it, but then it would pop up this, and they miss this part of it. And of course, if you trust this server, you can just click allow. You can click, you know, allow for all websites, but I wouldn't recommend that. But for this case, we're just going to click allow because we know exactly that the user is allowed to use this. This is part of their job. So we're going to click allow and they miss this, right? This They miss this and they could cause a problem. And here it is. Uh, this is basically modifying, you know, security settings uh, for your IE or your internet settings, if you will. And now you have to click allow again just to kind of confirm that it's okay to run Citrix and use your IE and connect to these, you know, remote um, services, remote desktop sessions or whatnot. So we're going to click allow, but I also check, do not show me this warning for this program again, because I don't want a user to come back to me later and says, hey, it's not working or, uh, you know, tell me, hey, there's an Internet Explorer security warning. I don't know what to do. So we're just going to make make sure that it doesn't happen again and going to do a check mark here. Don't show me this warning for this program again. And we're going to click allow. All right. So now the website basically refreshed itself and now it's going to come to a point where user can log in. So right now we're using the Citrix receiver itself, except it's embedded. It's embedded um, into here. So and then, of course, you can see the Citrix receiver. Um, if you go to your add ons, you can see that it's right there. You see it Metro Citrix ICA client and it's running. It's enabled and just says it's 32 bit. It doesn't matter. Uh, but anyways, it's there and it's enabled. Of course, if you if it's not working and it's it, you know it says disabled here, of course, just click to enable it. You know, you can just right click enable or or dis disable. So that that's another thing you might want to kind of consider if it's not running and you know it's installed. So this may take a bit to load, but usually it's going to it's going to come to a point where it's going to ask them to log in and it's going to be a web interface and it's going to say, "Well, we got a bunch of these apps. You can run this or that or you know, or you can just, I don't know. It, it, there are so many options. Again, I sorry, I can't show you this on the server level because, you know, number one, I can't afford the license. Um, 
you know, I, I can't afford to pay for this to show you. But number two, you know, I, of course, I can't show you this at my work. I, even at my work, I'm not the guy who actually um, supports Citrix uh, server. But even either way, I wouldn't be able to show you because I could lose my job. It's a security risk. And number three, actually, is that from desktop point of view, uh, this is all you need to know from help desk point of view. Again, I see I mentioned that this website is not necessarily working great. And it says here, cannot complete your request. But I'm going to click OK and we'll see what happens. Maybe we can get it to at least come to a point where it's going to allow us to log in. Anyways, this uh, demo that's set up, God knows where. I don't even know who, who made this or set up. I, I'm just glad it didn't exist. So we can get to a point where it shows you what it would look like if you were to try to support this for any of the users in our case mr mike moser so the main thing is here is to make sure that citrix receiver is installed and it's allowed to run now in our case again this is just not a working website uh, let me see if this actually works in edge just to see maybe we're lucky enough to get it to come up uh, up to a login maybe now, there it is. See, uh, this is the website. This is, you would just basically log in. Uh, well, it looks like it's already pre-filled out. Let me see. If, yeah, I can't log in. So this is probably abandoned somewhere, but this, you know, this is basically what happens. We know that Citrix receiver is now working and because we know it's coming up to the login point. And whenever they log in, they'll be able to click on app that they want to run, which will open up a new pop-up window that will have the Citrix session in it. You know, just a new window, you know, like this open and it would have uh, some tricks inside of it and then they can use it. Let's see, what else can I do and show you? Uh, when it comes to troubleshooting this, there's also another space, another place. If you're having trouble in installing Citrix receiver, there's another place you can uh, basically reset it if it's not working. What happens is it downloads the uh, Citrix receiver in your downloads folder, right? So if we go to the, the downloads, Maybe I, no, we, remember we select run. We didn't actually save it, sorry. So <laughs> it would be here if you actually selected the save, right? Instead of me just clicking run, it would be here. Another thing we can go through is go to C, go to the user's local profile. Right now I'm logged in as Kobo Man. Let me get this moved here. And then of course we're gonna go to app data. If you don't see app data, of course, make sure you click on view and highlight show hidden items, or you can just type in app data in here. But if we go back, we can see that app data folder is there. This is where we need to go. Now, it's been a while since I've actually troubleshooted Citrix, but looks like it's going to be under local. Sometimes it's under roaming. Sometimes it's in both. But let's check it out here. Here it is, Citrix. And we know that we've kind of installed it a few minutes ago. It says 3.58 p.m. Uh, that, that's when it was installed. Uh, right now it's 4.04 p.m. So that's about right. Here's our Citrix receiver right here. Uh, there are some logs. There are some DLLs. Uh, in the nutshell, if you have problems with receiver, you can go to add, remove programs. And we're just going to remove it, right? We're going to remove it. And we're going to uninstall it. And if it doesn't remove anything, because if it's a corrupted version of Citrix, let's say there's a new version that the server is using, and this is why it's not working, uh, we might want to do a clean install. Uh, you've probably seen of you know some software that lets you clean your system and do a clean install of like drivers and lot whatnot. This is kind of what we're going to do right now, and we'll see. Uh, Citrix, you know, and you know, and uh, a lot of software will remove any remnants of itself this case it didn't remove so we got a bunch of stuff that's left over from it you know uh, i know there are no dll's but if there's anything in here that could cause problems uh, we can do a clean uh, removal which is just simply delete or you can just rename the folder and it's going to re reinstall it again so if i run citrix here again you know let's say we did save on it and we install it it's going to create a new folder in here called citrix and then it's going to be clean and fresh install of it just in case because I've seen some buggy issues with Citrix. And that's just another way of, of, of trouble. There it is. You see how it appeared right now and it's at 4.05 p.m. Anyways, guys, I'm going to wrap this up. I'm just uh, I'm, I'm glad you guys reminded me to make this video. And uh, I'm going to add internal notes. Fixed Citrix by repair i'm just going to keep it simple so that way my boss if he ever checks out my tickets he can see that i did something 
and usually boss wants to know how you did it but you don't want to be super descriptive uh, because you know users sometimes get confused about the things you've done blah 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 anyways keep it simple just make sure that you state what you did to fix it and then close your ticket guys thank you so much for watching more videos to come i'm trying to make more more time to or trying to set more time aside to create more videos and as always there will be regular videos coming out in regards to this type of setup i suppose i think most people uh, that are into it and following me for it uh, content like this setup where i use this ticketing system and kind of show you what it kind of looks like uh, when you're dealing with um, real issues and kind of what it would look like if it was a real customer and a real ticketing system type of thing uh, please check out my other videos if you have any comments please leave them below and don't forget to like i really appreciate that as well take care you have a wonderful day bye bye